Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at Boyer's new and improved BYMM1 Plus. I wonder what they've improved. Let's find out. Okay, so on today's video we'll be taking a look at Boyer's BYMM1 Plus. This is a mini shotgun mic for mounting on DLSR cameras or using with mobile phones, that kind of thing, for vlogging, videography, all that kind of usual stuff. This is an upgraded model. They've made some slight changes to the original one, the BYMM1, which actually was a very good microphone in itself, but there was a few little bits and pieces which could have need improving. And uh, from what I can see from the packaging, they've actually done that. So speaking of which, we'll go through the video, we'll take a look at the packaging, take a look at what we get inside, we'll do some real world testing, and then we'll come back with my final thoughts and my recommendations. In complete transparency, this has actually been sent to us free of charge for review purposes by Boyer themselves, and they haven't asked us to say anything, just to check it out and see what we think of it. So obviously all the comments are our own and we have not been paid to do this video. So with that out of the way, let's start gushing about the packaging. Now I really do love the packaging on Boyer products. I don't know what it is, it's just uh, that simplicity which really does seem to work for me. So on the front we've got the picture itself of the unit itself, and we've got the official Boyer logo sticker on there as well, so it's a genuine product, not a counterfeit, which weirdly people have been making counterfeits of these, so obviously do watch out for that when you're buying them. So do buy from reputable sources. As you can see on the front it says it's a super cardioid condenser shotgun microphone, and also it's compatible with mobile phones, iPads, laptops, cameras, video cameras, etc, etc. Does cover pretty much every single base. Also, something which they put on the front there, which is a very small little thing, but it does say there, it's now got the Rykoat Lyra mounting system on there. So they have actually licensed this from Rykoat themselves, which is part of the upgrade. Moving around to the side, you can see there's a uh, demonstration in action. So you can see someone there with their mobile phone doing some kind of uh, podcast or something. And we've got some information on the bottom about great sound quality, no battery required, 3.5mm headphone pass-through, which again is another one of those add-on features, and also the new Rykoat Lyra mount. Excellent stuff. On the back goes into, uh, again, more of the features, so compatible with smartphones, tablets, DLSRs, consumer camcorder, PCs, and more. It's a super cardio pattern condenser shotgun microphone, and it's got improved signal-to-noise ratios, etc., etc. Plug-and-play operation, again, no batteries required durable metal construction and a 3.5mm headphone pass-through or output. Also now included the Rykoat Lyra shock mount system and furry windshield included. All good stuff and then it goes further into specifications so I'll put those on the screen so you can see those now but essentially it's got a slightly better signal to noise ratio of 78 dB and the sensitivity is minus 36 plus or minus 3 dB which uh, yeah, is pretty good for a non-powered microphone. Size-wise, it's very small, very compact, and weight-wise, if you're worried about adding extra weight to your DLSR if you're vlogging and you've got maybe uh, like a Joby Gorilla Pod and you're carrying things, you don't want things to get too heavy, don't worry, this thing's only 60 grams. So let's take out a box and see what we actually get. Although we got a pretty good idea because I've just read it all out to you, but anyway. This is an unboxing channel, so I guess we should unbox it. So what do we get? We get a instruction manual, which uh, goes through in some detail, gives you specifications, etc., etc. We're never going to read that. Also, you get a warranty card and you get a couple of Boya stickers. So you can peel those off and stick them somewhere that you want, I guess. Actually, inside the microphone package itself, let's go through and see what we get. So there's two connection leads. So you've got one lead, which is for kind of PCs, DLSRs, standard 3.5 mil jacks. Also, you get another one, which is for your things like iPads, iPhones, mobile phones, all that kind of stuff. And it is clearly written on there which one's which and which end goes into which. So if you do plug these in around the wrong way, on some of the cables, they will not work because these are TRRS and TRS, accordingly, depending on what device you're using. So do make sure you plug them in the right way. But you shouldn't find any problems. Essentially, the right angled connector goes into the microphone and the straight plug goes into your device. Pretty straightforward. Also in the packaging, we get a rather nice kind of leatherette pouch so you can store all your bits and pieces in there which is all nice to see so you can put this inside your camera bag and it'll keep it all nice and safe and actually this is kind of like a waterproof leatherette so it's going to be splash proof so if you're out in the field doing some recording in the uh, British weather which at the moment is pretty awful if your stuff's in here it's going to be looked after pretty well also we get the the new improved shock mount which has got the standard quarter inch thread on the bottom so you can plug that into most devices kind of like 
your DSLR cameras, etc. Or maybe if you want to, if you're using this in like a home studio setup, you could get like a little mini tripod and just have it stuck in front of you. Nice and easy to do. One thing I've noticed already is that shock mount is made of a much better plastic than the previous one. And the actual bit that grips the microphone does look to be extremely sturdy. So we'll see how good that is shortly. Moving on to the next part is the actual microphone itself and the dead cat or windshield. So that just pulls off. There is a kind of rubber ring in there which clamps down and it's all very well and good. Again, we'll test out, see how well it does in wind circumstances a little bit later on. But yeah, pretty good, very nice quality. And uh, yeah, it's molting a little bit, but never mind. Next up, we've got the actual microphone capsule itself and this is all metal, ow, metal construction and yeah, very, very well built. There's a couple of screws on the back there, so if you ever needed to take it apart for some reason, then maybe you could do, but I don't know why you'd want to. But it seems to all be finished very, very nicely. On the back, you've got it clearly mounted, the actual model number, and also which jack is which. So the one on the left is for your line out, which is essentially going to be going into your camera or into your smartphone, whatever the case may be. And the one next to it has got a headphone marker on there, so you can plug in a set of headphones to this. Now, these aren't for actual monitoring whilst recording. This is designed so that if you've got it in some kind of setup, maybe for your mobile phone, and you've got like a little mobile phone rig going on, you can actually do your recordings, then you can press play on the app in your mobile phone, and you can listen back to your recordings to make sure the audio levels are right and all that kind of usual stuff. Obviously, if you're using a DLSR camera or some sort of camcorder, generally you do get your levels actually on the screen somewhere, so it's not quite as important. But for mobile phone users, if you're just using the standard app, in most mobile phones when you press record you don't really have any visual feedback of your actual noise levels so it's nice that you can actually monitor that quickly without having to pull a jack out plug another jack in it's a little bit of a gimmick if i'm completely honest with you but i guess for some people it will be extremely handy but for most people i think it would have been better if they could have actually wired that so that it was actually a proper real-time audio monitoring feature but it is what it is the one thing we should come on to is price. At the moment, this in the UK is around like £35, which actually puts it into a really decent price bracket. The kind of obvious competition for this would be the Rode Video Micro, which is normally in the region of about £50 to £60. So it is a considerable saving. And from what I've seen of other YouTubers' reviews of this already, it does seem to be very comparable. So let's get it set up and see what it's actually like. So first of all, we're going to attach it to our mount. And that is actually very strong, that mount. So that's not going to be going anywhere in a hurry. You can still adjust it, so forward and backwards a little bit. But it's not uh, not particularly easy to get on or off, which is uh, probably a good thing, because you don't want it going out all over the place. And the, yeah, the shock absorption on there is seems to be very good. So next thing to do is to put your wind muff on. Now, obviously, if you're using this in a very, very quiet environment or a non-windy, there's no breeze or anything and you don't necessarily need this, then obviously you can just use it as is with the capsule kind of naked or bare. Again, if you've got it in a home setup and you've got it on a tripod, then it's going to be perfect in this kind of position. Although if you are one of those people that uh, pronounces your plosives a little bit highly like I do, then you can put the muff on and then that will reduce some of that as well. And also it will block out some of the other noises. Now this is designed with a kind of pattern so that it does reject side and rear noise. So most of the input is from this front section. You will get a little bit on the sides. So if you're having it like this, it's not gonna sound particularly good. You wanna aim at the actual person that's speaking. So if you're maybe putting this into some sort of ceiling mount or off camera mount, you'll ideally want it pointed at you. So do bear that in mind. But from the back, it is going to give you pretty much total rejection, which for some people is good. Uh, again, depends on your filming style and what you're doing. There is another version of this, which we'll be reviewing shortly, which actually does have a front and rear mic. So if you're one of those people that goes out doing your vlogging and you're maybe picking up things in front of you, you can switch to the front. And if you then want to do a little bit of a talk over, you can just switch it and it will go to the back or you can have an equal balance between the two. So that's going to be coming up in a future review. So if you want to see that, don't forget to get subscribed and all that kind of good YouTube stuff. So back to setting this up. So we'll put our wind muff on. And next thing we do, we want our cable. So for this particular instance, we're going to be using the microphone to camera cable, which is this one. You can quite easily tell that. So if you look at the actual cables themselves, if one of them's got two black rings on it rather than three. That's the one for your kind of uh, laptops, cameras, camcorders, all that kind of stuff. If they've both got the three rings on both ends, then that's the one for your smartphones. That's an easy way of telling. So if for some reason these tags do come off, which uh, 
Over time, I'm pretty sure they will do. That's just an easy way of recognizing what goes where. So we're gonna plug the right angled one because it says on the little sticker, microphone. So we'll plug that into the one that says line out. That's in there nice and firmly. That's not gonna wiggle out very easily. And now we can mount it to our camera. So this is the Lumix uh, G7, which is my spare B cam. Tighten up the mount on the top and there's a little microphone jack on the side. So all you need to do is plug this in here. Now the first thing I'm kind of thinking of on this, it would have been nice to have seen the cable having some kind of uh, kind of spring coil on there just to take up some of this slack. It is a, a fine cable and it's actually gonna be fine, but it would have been nice to have seen that. You can, if you want to obviously put cable ties or any kind of tie downs you want onto and that'll keep it under control. Now, as you can see, it's wobbling around a little bit. There is a little bit of contact with the front there. So uh, do bear that in mind. So if you're bouncing around a lot, you may get a little bit of sound pick up from the front of the camera onto the dead cat, but the dead cat should really absorb most of that. So we'll do some quick tests on this now. I'm gonna do some quick tests indoors, then we'll do some quick outdoor tests, and then I'll put it into the computer, see what it's like, and then I'll come back with my final thoughts. So this is the first of the tests. As you can see, this is the normal mics unboxing setup, and I don't have my lav mic on. We are completely using just the Rode BY-MM1 Plus and hopefully the sound is coming through nice and clearly. The camera has been set slightly differently, so the gain on the camera, normally when I'm using the electrified, or the Lavelier mic, I normally set it to minus six dB and let the electronics do the work at the moment. This is coming purely out of here, so we've got the camera set to zero dB, and this is probably about a foot away from my face, and hopefully the uh, plosives are not being picked up. That's really difficult to do, but this is how I talk normally, so hopefully the audio is coming through nicely. It'd be interesting to see actually in the playback of this what the sound difference is like between the two, whether or not you're noticing a massive difference. I'd imagine you're going to get a bit more echo because normally the lav mic, because it's kind of here, it's encased in my t-shirt or my coat or whatever, so it does block out a lot of that other stuff. This is pointing directly at me at the moment, so if I turn it around onto the side, now hopefully my voice should be a little bit quieter and it's probably coming through a little bit less, which is what you want. You want a little bit of that rejection. And if you turn it all the way around all together, then you should barely be able to hear me. Now I'm gonna tap this a little bit to see if there's any noise that comes through and to see if that is gonna make any difference to the sound recording. Obviously this is kind of replicating what would be if you're moving around outside possibly with a little bit of noise going on. And if we carry on doing that, Hopefully it sounds okay and you can't really get any of the noise traveling through the cable. That is often a problem with some of these devices, that the noise will travel through cables. So yeah, hopefully uh, this is going to be a relatively good test to see what's going on. Now I'll take the cap off, so I do apologize for doing this. So that is with the wind muff taken off and I'd imagine there's going to be a little bit of an amplitude in the actual volume now. And hopefully it still sounds pretty good. You can tell what it's gonna sound like. This is me talking directly at it. This is with me talking to it from the side. And this is the rear rejection. Now obviously because we're in a studio environment or basically a room in a house, we are gonna get a lot of stuff being bounced around off the of walls, etc. We don't have any um, kind of padding on the walls whatsoever. This is literally our kind of dining room, although you can't really see it like that. But yeah, there's no soundproofing in here whatsoever. So this is essentially what it would sound like in a normal household environment. It's not very easy for me to say. So again, hopefully you can uh, hear that okay. If for any reason I've had to adjust the levels, I will make a note on the screen. So if there's anything done in post-production, I'll let you know at the bottom. So do keep an eye out for that. But essentially this is a test of what it should sound like if you've got it inside. Now for me personally, if I'm gonna use this full time actually in the studio setup, there is actually like an overhead cam mount above me there. So probably what I'd end up doing is having the microphone kind of just somewhere out of shot here. You can probably see that a little bit, but there you go. So yeah, having it around about here, just slightly out of shot, should work very, very nicely. Again, I'm gonna listen back to this after, see what it's like, and then uh, go through that on our final thoughts. Okay, so here we are outside with the camera doing a test, and it is actually raining a little bit, and it's pretty windy as well. And if you can see from the uh, the trees behind me, if we get this into shot, and yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty blowy actually. I should have put my mics unboxing hoodie on, available from Patreon, links below. But yeah, what does it sound like? This is kind of arm's length on my Joby Gorillapod. As you can see, yeah, there's a little bit of breeze. You can possibly hear the leaves going. So this is with me uh, front on. This is kind of arm's length away. And this is side on. And this is from the rear. So hopefully this is rejecting everything. 
I can hear my voice reflecting a little bit from the houses, so you can possibly pick that up. But overall, I think it's actually not too bad. Looking at the microphone levels, they don't appear to be peaking. I've not gone into the red yet, so hopefully you can hear me okay. And uh, yeah, hopefully you're not getting too much wind noise. This is with the wind muff on, so I'm going to take that off now. So that is now with the, uh, the wind muff taken off. So if there's any noise now, you should hear it. Now moving around normally, you probably won't pick up too much of it. I don't know, we'll see what happens when we uh, play this back. But hopefully this is a, a relatively good test. And actually if we do a walk, you see the mic's bouncing around. And I appear to be getting wet feet as well. <laughs> it is actually raining at the moment. Good job the Lumix camera is semi-waterproof. But anyway, there you go, there's the sound test. Hopefully it's uh, yeah, sounding pretty good. Let's get back inside, it is raining. Okay, so there you go, there are some of the sound tests, both in the studio environment and also out in the garden. And actually it was windier out there than I thought it was with the wind muff actually taken off. It was surprising how much it cut it. When you were out there, first of all, just me first walking up the garden, I couldn't hear the noise at all of the wind. Headphone users, please do let me know. I have watched this footage back already on my computer from my normal desktop speakers, and I can't see any issues with sound quality whatsoever. And certainly the wind noise was completely eradicated. In the second part, when I took it off, definitely the camera was kind of taken over a little bit and removing some of that wind noise and also taking my voice out of it as well. So there was that to it. So definitely the, uh, the dead cat does seem to be doing a fantastic job. And actually this puts me in a really weird position because I really do love using my lav mic for its kind of sound quality and reliability and all that kind of stuff. But also I dislike the fact of having to be tethered to a cable. So I am seriously considering having this mounted just out of shot, just up here somewhere, and actually be able to use it. I'm gonna to have to work on some kind of roof mounting system to do that. But the sound quality actually does seem to be very comparable to my lav mic, which I wasn't actually expecting. It does seem to be very close. Again, when I'm doing the editing on this, I'm gonna to have to look at it a little bit closer and look at the waveforms and all that kind of stuff. But actually, for the sake of 35 pounds, or 34 pounds as it is here in the UK as of November 2020, this is actually a really compelling option. The other competition, obviously the Rode VideoMic Micro or whatever it's called, is around about 50, 60 pounds. And again, sound quality, I would say actually is slightly less good on the Rode. The Rode seems to have a little bit of a kind of hiss to it, whereas the Boya does appear to have a, quite a nice, deep, rich, bassy sound to it, which uh, again, I wasn't necessarily expecting. Normally these don't work out as well as a lav mic, in my personal opinion, but this has come pretty darn close. So anyway, there will be some links in the video description, they are affiliate links, so if you do buy from Amazon, etc, etc, then we do get a little bit of kickback on the channel, but uh, it doesn't cost you any more, and everything you buy all helps the channel grow, and for us to get more things like this to test and to review. So if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like on it, and if you want to leave a comment, please do, I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are. If you're using a really high-end set of headphones, uh, let me know what the audio quality was like. Was it better? Was it worse? Did it work for you? Did it not work for you? Are you considering getting one of these for your own camera? I'll be really interested to know. But anyway, I think that's going to wrap this one up. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you guys in the very next video. Thanks for watching.